February 23rd, 2023. February 23rd. Um, when I was growing up, I was a huge, huge wrestling fan. Huge wrestling fan. Um, and I was turned on to wrestling by my brother. My brother was way into tag teams and things like that. And he still is. Um, one of his favorite tag teams, or maybe his favorite tag team, was the Hart Foundation. Jim Neanville, Nightheart, and Bret Hart. Um, I remember hearing kids talk about wrestling in the sixth grade. Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, The Undertaker. Um, I think I think the first time I saw Bret Hart um, was the Iron Man match. No, 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 no. Let me go back. Let me go back. Um, I remember seeing Hulk Hogan. I didn't know who he was or what he was, but I remember seeing this guy dressed in yellow on TV. This, this big guy dressed in yellow. I don't even know if I knew it was wrestling at that point. Um... But I remember seeing Bret Hart with his shades. And in my young mind, it was Mr. Cool Man. Mr. Cool Man. He just looked just cool with his shades, you know? It was a cool pair of shades he had. Um, this was... This was the sixth grade when I heard kids talking about wrestling. Um, and it just so happens that um, in this is in this I was it was ninety six. I was in the sixth grade in nineteen ninety six. So it's like the universe is telling me. If you know anything about wrestling, you know 96 was a big year. Um, you know, so as I'm growing up, I'm, al I'm always seeing these Hulk Hogan to uh, toys, these Hulk Hogan dolls. Um, I remember the Hulk Hogan cartoon. Um... So 96, I'm hearing these kids talk about wrestling, right? My aunt um, had cable television. And man, just by by luck. Um, it's Bash at the Beach 96. Bash at the Beach 96. I know who Hulk Hogan is. And I'm watching my first time ever tuning in to wrestling was Bash at the Beach 96. Hulk Hogan, um, you know, turning heel. I'm like, what is this? You know? I don't remember how I got into the WWF. Um, I think it was. I think video games had a lot had a lot to do with it. Maybe. 
I don't remember. But a lot of, I saw the world through my brother's eyes a lot of the time. In um, cartoons and now in wrestling. And he would talk about Bret Hart. So with Bret Hart being his favorite, I'm tuning into Bret Hart. You know, who eventually became my favorite. Um, you know, so I remember watching this tag match that he was in. It was him against Arn Anderson, and he uh, reversed Arn Anderson's headlock, and I thought that was the coolest stuff ever. I thought it was the coolest thing ever, because if somebody has you in the headlock, you're done. But Bret Hart reversed it. I was like, yo! And, and he reversed it into, he put Arn Anderson's arm behind his back. You know, and every time I watch a Bret Hart match, he would reverse. He would he would do these reversals. Somebody would have him in a headlock, and he would, and if it was a standing headlock, he would suplex the guy. It just seems so intelligent. Um. think you know I'm pretty sure I'm thinking wrestling is real at this point um, so you know I'm just watching it right and you know you watch the Iron Man match and Bret Hart is your favorite and at this point I'm not this is the the first match I'm seeing so I don't know about the quality of, of wrestling matches and it just so happens that I'm watching probably the best performance ever. You know, so my intro into wrestling is Hulk Hogan turning heel and the 60 Minute Iron Man match. WrestleMania 12. WrestleMania 12, I think, was the next thing I saw. Um, I forget when I started watching uh, wrestling on Monday nights, but definitely in the seventh grade, I'm watching wrestling on Monday nights. So, Stone Cold Steve Austin enters the picture. Stone Cold Steve Austin, who just seemed like just the perfect antagonist. Because I'm, as a kid, I'm a goody two-shoes. And Bret Hart is like the perfect wrestler... Um, to be a fan of at that point. And Stone Cold was like the perfect person to dislike. And it was so entertaining. It was so good. It was so good. It was so good. I remember Austin before this um, because he had, I think he had a wrestling match with Savio Vega. WrestleMania 12, Savio Vega. Um, so now this guy, Bret Hart, is returning. You know, I'm coming into wrestling when Bret Hart is returning to the WWF. He's like, you know, I'm going to stay, I'm going to be with... Um, 
the WWF forever, you know, just the perfect dude, you know what I mean, just wholesome, you know, um, and he has this match, I think I, I think I saw that match he had at, um, Madison Square Garden with, uh, yeah, I remember, I did see that match because I remember um, kids, some of my friends talking about it the next day saying that all Stone Cold had to do was let the move go when Bret Hart uh, did the turnbuckle move. He's, they, you know, a friend of mine was like, all Stone Cold had to do was just let, let the hold go, you know. So it's like now I'm hooked. You know what I mean? Um, but why was Bret Hart? Why did Bret Hart grow on me? Um, you can look at wrestling today. You can look at wrestling in the past. You know, when Hulk Hogan and. Ric Flair and Shawn Michaels, even today with Roman Reigns, and you can see maybe not every maybe everybody probably can't see it, but I can see that these guys are acting. I know with Hardcore Holly, it was it was real with him. It was real with Hardcore Holly. And it was real with some wrestlers sometimes. But with Bret Hart, boy, that dude meant it. And this was before, um, this was before, you know, wrestling was scripted. So you had to ad-lib a lot more. And, you know, what this dude was saying, like, he probably wasn't Ric Flair with it, but what he was saying, he meant it, you know? Um, and I remember in the Hitman Heart um, documentary, you know, this is the first time I began to start looking at Bret Hart as an actor, but... Um, you could see that he took a lot of that stuff personally. You could see it. Um, and this is a conversation I had when I went to New Orleans a few weeks ago. While I'm watching the Bret Hart, Stone Cold, Steve Austin feud, according to the audience at that time, Stone Cold is on the rise and Bret Hart is becoming stale. This is in the eyes of the adults. The people who are going to the shows and, you know, buying the tickets and cheering. Austin is become Austin is getting hot. As a kid, I'm watching this and I'm still loving Bret Hart. You know what I mean? I'm loving Bret Hart. So when I see the WrestleMania 13 match, when it's a, a, a double turn, I'm still looking at Bret Hart as the face, the good guy. When your casual fan... is going to look at Bret Hart as the heel because he was doing uh, bad guy stuff. But in my mind, I'm like, man, get him. He deserves this. You know, he's been bothering you. You know what I mean? Yes, you won the match, but this dude is relentless and he's um, not going to stop. You know what I mean? 
So you got to go in. Like you got to give it to them. And I, was, I bought in to um, Ken Shamrock at that time too because he seemed like this lethal dude. Um, so I'm in my mind like, man, I wouldn't mess with this dude. Uh, when he pulled Bret Hart off, Bret Hart looked at him and backed down and got out of the ring. And at that point, I was like, man, I would have did that too. You know what I mean? It was so on point. It was so on point. This was such a good time in wrestling. And I agree. I, you know, I, I, right now is good too. You know, Roman Reigns is doing really well. Triple H in 2000, 2001, when he was healed, before he pulled his um, quad, that was some good stuff, but I haven't seen anything as good as what Bret Hart was doing, um, but after this double turn, Austin turning face and Bret Hart turning heel, this, this is what stood out to me so much. You can truly see that Bret Hart was a good guy. You could see it. And, you know, this has been said so many times, but anywhere outside of the United States if Bret Hart entered the arena he was cheered like a good guy but you know the WWE the WWE uh, WWF at the time every night is going to be in America so he's getting booed out of the building Every time he walks in, you know, he's getting booed. Everybody's booing this man. But he's sticking to his guns, you know. Because he's like, in my mind, you know. He's like, I know I'm right. I know what I'm doing is right. You have this good guy getting booed. And his dialogue at the time was like, you American fans are twisted. Y'all have it twisted you know what I mean look at who you're cheering this, man I'm, I'm zoning back to my uh, 13 year old self right now but Brad Hart is like man y'all look at who you're cheering you're cheering this guy this guy who swears and curses and is rude and you have this other guy, Shawn Michaels, who, you know, is stripping and doing all this uh, um, disrespectful stuff, you know, as D-Generation X. Because, like, both of these dudes, both of these guys were really, really raw. Like, they were raw. Like, um, Stone Cold, he's, he's, like, cursing on TV. And this is new for that time. And uh, Shawn Michaels is doing some like some sexual stuff on TV. Um, and so I'm a goody two shoes at this time. I'm not too uh, offended by what Austin and Michaels are doing, but I'm like, yo, Bret Hart is right. He's right. Sorry, damn, I'm, I'm, I'm driving in traffic. I don't even know if you can hear me, uh, but I was about to uh, mess up. Uh, but anyway, I don't know if you heard that. If you did, excuse my language. Um, damn, this person messed up my zone, this idiot. Um, damn, I forgot what I was saying. 
Oh yeah yeah. Uh so Bret Hart is pointing out what Austin and Michaels is doing. And I'm agreeing, you know? Um you know so when he's talking about being screwed how is he not right? You know what I mean? I didn't, you know, people were saying he was whining, but um Man, there's this, there's this, um, there's this video, there's this clip right after he, um, I think he lost to Psycho Sid in this cage match. And he's so passionate. He's so passionate. This is the first time you hear him curse on TV, you know what I mean? Like he snapped and it seemed so real. So, it was so good. Um, I would put WWF 1997 against Game of Thrones, against X-Men, Dragon Ball Z If you truly tune in To wrestling And you just get a little bit of the backstory For 96 and 97 WWF You are in for such a treat um, The Wood Bret Hart Shawn Michaels Stone Cold and The Undertaker, what those guys were doing during that period. Man, you know, it's, you know, praise is given to the Attitude Era. And by that time, <clears throat> since Bret Hart was gone, he was in WCW. I was a WCW guy um, during a lot of uh, what was going on in WWF. Um, but that Bret Hart stuff was just golden. Um, and I'll leave it there, man. I think I've been going on for, I, I don't know how long. Um, 